Hello and welcome back and today I want to try to answer a very simple question. Where are the standard and play series Synology models now in the start of 2021? I'm aware how clickbaity this video sounds, I'm aware how clickbaity the title was and everything, but unfortunately there's just no other way to talk about this. When it comes to the Synology range of solutions, they have arguably been one of the, uh, and still are, one of the most popular brands in network attached storage. One of the ways in which they've done that is to have a very clear portfolio of solutions, each with target demographics and naming strategies that clearly define what they are. There's been the J series or junior or whatever the J stands for. I've still never really got confirmation on that. There's the, the J being the entry level stuff. Then you've got the standard, which has no denomination there. Then you have the play series, which is kind of the multimedia angle side of things. The plus, which is kind of their fully featured model that basically is meant to be the best representative desktop or uh, rack mount version of that series. Then the excess for uh, enterprise level utilization. Then you've got the likes of the SI, which is a SAS based model uh, architecture, FS flash station, NVR for surveillance. There's just more and more solutions in their portfolio, each with their own designated category. But if you're watching this, that means you're wondering like me, why have the latest generation not had any standard series? So we're talking like the DS421 or 221, stuff like that. And why have there been no Play models? It's now coming up on three years since we've seen the Play series uh, that arrived in 2017-18 that was in the form of the 218 Play, 418 Play, uh, 418, 218. These models that were living there between the J and the Plus series. Where are they? Well, today I'm going to go through five main reasons why I think we haven't seen them yet or potentially at all. All. because we're all waiting on these things you know because a lot of us I like using the plus series but I know there's a number out of you that are just looking for something to bolt onto your existing storage array um, as another air, uh, tier to your backup strategy or you're just looking for low level access and you've looked at the J's and gone not much so let's go through the five reasons that I think that the J uh, sorry the play and standard series have yet to arrive reason number one a lot of it comes down to the process. Uh, uh, we've noticed in the latest iterations of the standard and play series, and latest in italics two to three years ago, um, those versions all arrived with the Realtek RTD 1296 processor, a quad core 1.4 gigahertz CPU. Um, now that CPU then was pretty groundbreaking. It was a 64-bit ARM. So although it couldn't challenge a lot of the Intel and AMD top tier stuff, it could still do a number of processes which up till that point were very much not possible in ARM. We're talking 4K playback, we're talking transcoding, we're talking a lot of handling, even 10GBE as well was available to be done on those processes. Fast forward to now, and that processor that was featured then in the standard and play series is now being utilized in the J's. So I think the first reason that we've not seen a standard or play uh, model in the latest generation of Synologies is because the CPU industry kind of needs to move forward more in terms of the ARM. Now we have seen a lot of ARM V8 processor arrive uh, on the market. Outside of that Realtek processor, we've seen a lot of those Marvel CPUs in V8. We've seen some AMD as well, ARM processors in V8, ultimately 64-bit ARM processors, but even then, the Realtek was still kind of ahead of the pack in most cases, both in terms of affordability, efficiency, and power. And I think the first reason for those uh, the play and the standard not arriving is simply that the CPU market hasn't actually gone forward enough in the ARM 64-bit stakes. And I think we're getting there, and there's a few that have now risen to the top of the pile, but given that they've only just arrived, or relative arriving on the scene within the last 8 to 12 months, chances are this hasn't been fully integrated into a new play or standard series. So consequently, that's why I don't think those are on the scene right now. The CPU market for ARM64 bits has had to catch up. The second reason, and I've already kind of alluded to it already, is chances are Synology have looked at the 220J and the 420J, both of which arriving with DDR4 memory, both of which arriving with that Realtek processor, the RTD 1296 quad core 1.4 gigahertz processor, and gone, actually, I think that's enough. And the thing is, 
I can't really blame them. When you look at the J now, the J and its processing power and its capabilities has caught up with the Plus, even at a price point where slipping a device into between the two of them is actually not going to be that easy. Because they've effectively duplicated the Play and Plus architecture from two to three years ago and then classified that as the J series, it does make sliding a new generation in between the J and the Plus a great deal harder than ever before because notwithstanding the architecture between them is very, very similar. You know, the Celeron and the Realtek is something that's already been around for a while. But if you do introduce one of the new Marvel uh, AMD or even any new Realtek um, ARMv8 processor or even higher in between these two versions, you substantially undermine one or the other. So I think that's another reason why we may not have seen a play or a standard because the actual gap in the market of their, or the gap in their portfolio has shrunk dramatically and to introduce a new line in between them could destabilize one or the other. And as a brand, they may well be looking at that in a kind of a global portfolio view. Now, reason number three, and this is the one I really hope it isn't. Of all the five reasons that I'm talking about today, this is the one that I sincerely hope is not the reason for the lack of play or standard. And that is that Synology are continuing a focus on big business. Now, this is something we've talked about tangentially and in a number of different ways with their new SSDs and new hard drives and the locking uh, compatibility-wise of their new releases to those hard drives. But we've always known that Synology has kind of tried to maintain uh, a couple of horses in the race. They've tried to go on one with the standard home SMB market over here, predominantly in desktop. And then over here, they've gone business. They've gone excess, they've gone rack mount, they've gone flash station, and they've always kept these two plates spinning. But in the last year or so, we have certainly seen a bigger focus on that business side. The home users, the plus series, when that arrived, a number of you were like, oh, this is pretty cool. It's quite better than the previous iteration, but the jump between each generation arguably in terms of what's been achieved, in terms of hardware and what's included, has shrunk slightly each time. But the business side of things has jumped hugely in terms of the hardware solutions, in terms of the architecture, in terms of the components, and the rhetoric and the branding has jumped significantly. Now, Synology have generally focused at the start, first half of the year, normally on enterprise, and in the second half of the year, SMB and home get to focus, so it's still very early in the year to reach this conclusion. But it's still arguably a, change, a potential change in attitude by Synology of where they want to be in the grand storage market, because they already feel like they're at the top of NAS, but there is, of course, the tier above. That enterprise kind of service software support level at the top, your net apps, your high-end HP servers, basically the real enterprise, the ones up here that spend tens to hundreds of thousands per rotation in a way that the ones at the bottom, the SMBs, or even the people that buy rack stations and stuff like that will not even come close to. I don't think this is the most likely. I sincerely hope it isn't. But I, there's always that chance that Synology is moving into a kind of uh, like a Reebok model where they have the enterprisey, crazy expensive stuff, but they're never going to get rid of the Reebok classics because they know that's the money spinner. Hopefully this isn't going to happen, but that's my third reason. The fourth reason, let's be honest, is probably the most likely of all of them, the pandemic and its effects on the supply, ch supply chain, on R&D, on development, on production. It has affected everything in terms of tech. It's affected everything in terms of everything. And I think with regards to solutions arriving, a number of us felt that the Synology's um, Plus series in the twos and four bays arrived almost half a year later than a number of us were expecting. And I think it's not impossible to imagine that the Play and the Standard would have been released a great deal sooner had it not been for the pandemic and its effects on working practices globally. And again, whether that's because they've looked at um, what they can achieve with their resources, and by resources I do mean actual hands on uh, feet on ground, but also they've looked at buying patterns and looked at the way people are going to purchase a product and gone, maybe not now, maybe we'll just hold off a little bit and stand over here a bit, but you never know. And the last reason I think for a lack of standard 
um, or uh, play series in the latest iteration of Synology desktop hardware could be Synology changing their release strategy. And again, this can be caused by any one of the previous points I've already mentioned. But generally, desktop devices pretty rarely end, in a, at least in the last five to ten years, in the number one. That you know, you, you get the five and the eight bay devices we've seen in the SMB series. Again, they've arrived at um, 1813, 1815, 1817, 1819, and 1821. And the same goes for the, that kind of SMB. With the home users, it almost always has ended on even numbers uh, 2 plus, 4 plus, 6 plus, 8 plus, 0 plus. Only a few times have we seen a mid-release such as the 215 or we've seen you know odd numbers interjected into them we've seen it a few times with the J when they've kind of had to pop in a little solution there to um, flesh out the release schedules of the entire year across the roadmap but this might be the case that they might be flicking towards a intermittent year of super budget standard plus super budget standard plus super budget standard plus and introducing that to kind of more fairly spread out releases of their hardware and maintain their branding overall um, to show that they're still dynamic as a company. Now, whether that one's true, again, we won't know until the end of the year, but it's always worth remembering that when you look at Synology's hardware releases, you generally have till about July, August before a solution is released with the model ID for the year it's in. Case in point, when we look at, say, um, the 920 series, we look at the 227, 2420, all of those were released between, depending on where you were in the world, between about May and the end of July. Different regions got it sooner, but because it was in that arguably first part of the year, for the most part, it was named 20 within 2020. Everything that was released afterwards, despite being released in 2020, ended in the prefix 21. And the same goes for all the things that have been released in 2021 from January up until now. All of those solutions have got 21 on the model ID. So there's every possibility that to maintain the old release strategy, that roll on mm, summertime, July, August, after that, the play and standard series arrive, and then they can actually, within Synology's own release terms, end on that prefix 22, and that's where you see your, two, uh, your DS222, your DS422, your DS222 Play, and the DS422 Play. But these are five reasons why I think we've not seen the Synology Play or Standard Series in the current generation. If there's anything I've missed, maybe you've got your theory that I don't know about, and if you're watching this in the future and they were released anyway, why not let me know if any of my points were correct. But thank you so much for watching. If you've enjoyed the video, click like. If you want to learn more, click subscribe and visit the links in the description where we're updating an article on these devices. So hopefully if you're watching this in the future and things have changed, it should let you know down in those articles. But otherwise, I will see you next time.